Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to recreate the Sharper poster in Photoshop. I recently ran across this poster for a film called Sharper, which has very cool 3D type effect as well as cool shadow effects. I thought it'd be interesting to recreate this in Photoshop. If you want to follow along, I have included all the assets that I use in a link in the description of this video. Go ahead, download those, and then let's dive into Photoshop. All right, so I'm going to go to File, New. We're going to create a new document here. And I want this to be 2,000 pixels wide by 3,000 pixels tall. The resolution should be 72 dpi and everything else we'll leave on the default. We'll go ahead and hit Create. The next thing I want to do here is set up some guides. So let's go to View, New Guide Layout. And here you'll probably see something like this. Uh, what we're going to do is first off, I'm going to turn off the columns and turn off the rows. I'm going to turn on the margin and I'm going to set some of these up. So the first one is going to be 1357. So that's going to bring almost to the middle of the document there. On the left side, we're going to do 144. On the bottom, we're going to do 450. And then on the right side, we're going to do 286. 286. Okay, next I need two more guides. So I'm going to go to View, Guides, and here we're just going to go New Guide. So this allows you to place guides at a pixel perfect place. Uh, it's just another way to add guides in Photoshop. And in this case, I want a horizontal guide and I want it to be at 1560. So this kind of represents the bottom of the text. And then over here, I need one more at 2195. So let's go view guide, new guide, 2195. Let's hit OK. And there you go. I now have my basic guides in place. You'll see how these come into play in a second here. OK, next, we're just going to add a fill. And I want this to be a solid color fill. And this is just going to be a very, very light gray. So we're going to go E, A, E, A, E, A, and then hit OK. Next, I want to add a black gradient coming in from the top. So I'm going to add a new layer. We'll call this black gradient. I'm going to go on to my gradient tool. And then I want my foreground color to be black. And I want this to go from the foreground color to transparent. I'm going to make sure it's on linear and then I'm going to stop start in the top right corner kind of go all the way to the bottom left corner like this and then we're going to set the opacity of this layer to 80. All right then I'm going to go switch my colors here so that white is my foreground color and we're going to call this white gradient and then this one is going to come from the bottom left up to about the halfway point. Again, I want it to be pointing toward that top right corner. So it has that same angle. So something like that. Next thing we're gonna do is start with our sharper type. So let's go to our type tool. And for this, I'm gonna use Times New Roman, regular. And we're gonna change this to 354 point. And then here, I want to change the letting to 160 pixels. And I also want the color of this to be uh, kind of a very, very light gray again. We're going to use E9, E9, E9 for this one. And let's hit OK. All right, so I now have everything in place. I'm going to go ahead and type in sharper. And let's hit the check mark there. So that's our type. It's a little hard to see just because it's very similar in color to our background. But before I do anything else, I'm going to convert this to a smart object. So let's go ahead and do that. 
All right, the other thing I wanna do before I start distorting this is I need to create a drop shadow for it. Now, essentially what I want is I want the drop shadow to be just the bottom of these letters. So I'm gonna to go to my lasso tool here and first just command click on this layer and that'll select the transparency. Uh, you can also right mouse click and select pixels. And then I wanna put this on intersect which is this one here. Now you can also just hold down shift and option, and that'll also get you the intersect. But what that's gonna do is it's just gonna intersect between these two selections. So I wanna select just the bottom, probably even more of just the bottom. So we'll do, oops, we'll do an intersect one more time, and I'm gonna try to get even lower. So I'm just selecting the bottom of these, so something like that. So if you can imagine a shadow being cast by these, this is the point where that um, shadow would be cast. So we'll start here. I'm gonna call this shadow bottom or bottom shadow. I'm gonna fill this selection now with black. So let's make black our foreground color. And if your black is your background color, you can hit X on your keyboard and that'll switch those two. All right, and then to fill with my foreground color, I'm gonna do Option, Delete, or Alt Backspace on a PC. And then I'm gonna do Command D to drop my selection. Now what I wanna do is I wanna stretch this out and turn it into our cityscape shadow. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my sharper layer for now. And then with the bottom shadow selected, I'm gonna go to Filter, Blur, Gallery, and then Path Blur. And with the path blur, I want it to be pointed straight up and down. Now, uh, when you're using this tool, like if I hold down shift, you can see it's not doing anything. So I'm going to use this guide here to make sure this line, because it does snap to the guide, I can make sure my line is perfectly straight up and down. So just like that. And then here, I want to do a few changes. So I can change the speed, which will change how much this stretches. A taper will kind of, as it stretches out, it gets less and less strong. So we're going to leave that at about 20. And then here, I want to change this to a rear sync. And that'll make the blur only on one side. Now, I do want to make this even longer. So something like that and then we'll hit OK. Now, because I stretched this out so much, we've kind of made this very transparent. So in order to make this less transparent, all I'm gonna do is do Command-J until this starts to look black. And it's gonna be quite a few times. So we'll just do Command-J, Command-J, just keep doing it till we get that being black. Now I have all these unnecessary layers. I'm just gonna hold down Shift, and then select all the way to my bottom shadow and then do Command E. That'll merge all these into a single layer. All right, then we're gonna go to Filter. We're gonna go back to Blur Gallery and we're gonna do it again and that's gonna get rid of all that banding. So let's go ahead and put this, snap it to this side guide again so that it's straight up and down. You can see here I'm just cleaning up that blur. I'm going to put it on rear sync again. Maybe increase the speed. So something like that. And then again, I'm going to do command J until I get the bottom black. And then we'll put all those in a layer. We can call this shadow base. All right, so now that we have our shadow base, let's build out the skyscrapers. So I'm gonna to go to File, Place Embedded, and in the Assets folder, um, you're gonna see this Skyline PNG. Let's go ahead and place that. And I wanna line it up so that it matches the width of my shadow here, and so that the bottom lines up to the bottom of my shadow, which, is right here. Okay. Next thing I want to do is I want the bottom of this 
to fade into this. So what we'll do is we'll just add a mask to this skyline layer and then with a gradient on the mask, we'll just go from about here up to about there. And not it's a little too much. So I'm going to hit X to switch to white and then come down on it about there. But even that's a little too strong, so maybe we'll do it to about there. Okay, good. All right, next thing I want to do is add the people cutouts to this. So let's go File, Place Embedded. And I have this file called Sharper Silhouettes. Um, I created these just using my silhouette brushes, uh, which I'll include in a link in the description of this video. I'll include a link where you can actually buy the silhouette brushes. So the first thing I'm going to do is just invert these with Command-I. And then I'm going to basically place these so that the white of our characters lines up with the white in the shadows here. So you can kind of see I already do to some degree, but I'm going to do a little bit of transform here so that they line up even better. So something like this. I don't want them low enough in here. So something like that, I think. I kind of want his head to be behind a building. So what I could do here is just go into this skyline smart object and maybe add a little bit of this black right in there behind his head. So something like that. I should probably make it go all the way down as well. So we'll just fill in that with black. And then I'll close this smart object. There you go. So now his head is got some black behind it. So something like that. And then I want to take all this and basically knock these out of our shadow. So to do that, I'm going to take the shadow base, the skyline, put those into a group, and we'll call this group shadow. And then I'm going to command click on our silhouettes and then holding down option, I'm going to add a mask to our shadows. And you can see what that's doing. It's cutting these out of our shadow layer. Next, I can convert this to a smart object. And now I have a smart object of our shadow and our sharper. So now we're going to start distorting these kind of making it look more like our sharper image, create that nice 3D text effect. So for now, I'm going to turn off the shadow. We'll focus on sharper first. I'm going to do Command T for transform. And what I want to do here is I want to line up this and this side, both with our guide there. And then I'm going to hold down Command. That'll allow me to distort this. And what I'm going to do here is line this up with that guide and then line this up with that guide. Next, we're going to take this and move this up. And then we'll line up this with that guide and this with that guide. So there you can kind of see the way it should be and why we have these guides. And we'll hit the check mark. OK, so now we have our sharper in place. The next thing we need to do is get this shadow lined up to it. Now, I've found that trying to line it up with these people silhouettes is a bit hard. So what I'm going to do is for now, I'm going to go ahead and just disable that and disable the skyline. So we just have these bottom um, shadows, which will make it easier to line up. So the next thing I'm going to do is Command T for transform. And let's get the bottom of our text lined up here, meaning the bottom of the shadow lined up with the bottom of our text. So we'll do something like this. And as you can see here, our right now our shadows are not at all lining up with our letters. And the reason for that is because of the distortion that we have is not matching. But before I even start manipulating that, 
let's cast a shadow. We know we're going to want to cast it kind of this way here. And then I'm going to start moving these points in until we get that shadow bottom lining up. So once we have the bottom lined up, which we do, we'll just start moving these points and try to get the black part lined up with the bottom of our letters. And you can see that's pretty darn close. Whoops. Kind of see there. And again, if we just move this point, you'll see all those things start to move. Get it to right about there. And I think that looks pretty good. Let's see if we can, whoops. Let's see if we can't make this a little bit longer, maybe. Something like this. Okay, so that lines up pretty well. Let's go ahead and turn these back on, close this, and we're getting the effect that we want there. Next, I want the uh, shadow, actually, we're not quite lined up. Okay, so as we zoom in here, you can see that as it gets further and further toward the S of sharper, we're lining up less and less. So let's do a transform. Let's move this in a little bit closer. And then the rest we're gonna do by just adjusting this, try to get those bottoms lined up a little bit better. So right about there, I think looks good. And this is, a lot of just trial and error to you trying to get those shadows lined up as best we can and as you can see as we manipulate each side it's it, it's wanting to move those bottoms but i think something like that is pretty darn close all right next i want to add a blur so that it's sharp here but then quickly gets blurry as it progresses away from where the letters touch down at the bottom there. So to do that, we're going to do filter, blur gallery, and I'm going to do a tilt shift. And here, the way a tilt shift works is basically everything between these two solid lines is in focus. And then everything after this dotted line is completely out of focus. And then it transitions between the dotted line and the solid line. So what I'm going to do is move this so that this solid line kind of lines up to the bottom of our letters. So I'm going to do something like this. Maybe move this closer. I really want that lined up nicely to the bottom of our letters. That way with this, we can quickly make it go out of focus. And here you can control how out of focus it goes. You can see there, if we do too much, it just looks odd. So I would want to go probably something around there. And we can always adjust this. I'm just looking at the P here, how fast or how slow it transitions into blurriness. And I think probably something like this looks good. So let's hit OK. OK, the next thing I want to do is I want to add just a little bit of thickness to our sharper letters. To do that, I'm going to hold down Option and make a copy. And we're going to call this Sharper Body. And for this, I'm just going to use my arrow keys and move it just two pixels up and two pixels to the right. And then I'm going to do to Command U to bring up my hue saturation. Just make this a tiny bit darker. So you can kind of see there. And as you zoom out, it's almost imperceptible, but it adds just a little bit of 3D-ness to our letters there, make them look kind of like a paper cutout. All right, next thing we're gonna do here is add just a tiny bottom shadow. I'm gonna go ahead and clear my guides. We don't need these anymore. Um, here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the lasso tool, and just go, kind of select out the very bottom of our letters. So just the part where it touches, something like that. And then I'm gonna intersect it with this. So I'll do Shift, Option, Command, and click on this thumbnail. And then I'll just have that bottom selected. And then right above my primary shadow, 
I'm going to make a layer called ambient shadow. Now, actually, what I'm going to do uh, is add it as a solid color. And here I'll just make it black and we'll call this ambient shadow. Now, the reason I did it with a solid color is I can now control the feather with my properties for my mask. So rather than using a Gaussian blur, I can have kind of a slider and I can adjust how blurry that is. So here I want it to be blurry almost to the point where it starts to disappear. So right about the 25 pixels and then we can take this down to about 40. This is very subtle, but it just gives a little bit more of a shadow where the letters are hitting, kind of an ambient shadow. All right, the other thing I want to do is on the shadow layer, I'm going to add a mask. And with a gradient, black gradient, we'll just go from right about where the shadow starts down to the letter so that it kind of fades as it gets closer to the letters there. So something like that. That's a little too much. So. Let's, I'm going to revert all the way back and try it from here to the letters. Maybe a little bit stronger up there. So something like that I think works. All right, then the next thing we need to do is just add some noise to the whole thing. So to do that, there's a few ways to do it. I'm going to just use my pattern, uh, which I'll include a link where you can buy these patterns on my website. But if you don't have this, you can also just add a gray layer and then go to filter, add noise, and you'll basically have the same thing. Then we can go here and put this on overlay. You can see what that's doing is it's just adding this noise to our whole image. Now this is too strong, so I can go here and just take my fill down until it's about how much I want, which is around 20 on the fill. I think that looks good. All right, next I'm going to do a few guides just to point to where we're going to put our lettering um, for that. Oh, actually, before I jump onto the lettering, I do want to add just a bit of pure white to the top of our sharper letters. So I'm going to add another layer and we're going to call this white gradient. And I'm going to clip this to the sharper layer. What that means is whatever I put on this layer will only affect the layer directly below it that it's clipped to. So for this, I'm going to go onto my brush tool and I want just a really soft brush. So probably around there. And then I'm going to make sure white is the brush I'm, or sorry, the color I'm painting. And then you can see as I'm brushing the top there, you can see that that's getting a little whiter. Now it's already so close to white that it's kind of hard to see, but you can see the difference it makes here on that S just to make it stand out a little bit more from that background. Okay, so let's go to view, new guide layout, and we're gonna add some guides for our lettering. So I'm going to default this again, turn off my columns, turn on my margins. And here I want the top margin to be 218. And we can leave these all at zero, except for the bottom, we'll make 108. All right, we'll hit OK. And then for the top type, let's go to our type tool. I'm going to change the font now to Helvetica new, medium, I'm going to change the point size to 64. And then here, I want to get rid of any tracking that I have. So I'll put that on zero. And then we'll just type up here, an Apple original film. And just move this until it's centered. And you can see I have my smart guides turned on. Those are those yellow guides. And those kind of help you out, just line up with other elements. And in this case, it's helping me just line that up with the center of my canvas. 
Um, actually, under my new guide layout here, let's go back to our new guide layout. In addition to this, I do want to add five columns and we'll put the gutter on zero. Okay, so next I'm going to take this layer that we just made. I'm going to hold down option that will allow me to make a copy of it. And I'm just going to center that up here. And here I want to make John Smith and the Smith will be capitalized. And for this, we're going to put this on bold and then the John on regular so that we have a little bit of a change in the width of our lettering there. And then we're going to change this to 48. And I want that just kind of sitting below the Apple original film. And then we're going to center up and add one of these. Oops. There, there, and there. And you can change those to whatever you want them to be. And then we'll do one more at the bottom here. Oops. Hold down option. And for this, I'm going to change our lettering to black. So we'll just change my foreground color to black. Hold option delete with my layer selected. And then here we'll type in all caps February 2023. I'm going to make this 80 points. And then we'll also add 50 points of tracking to that. I'm going to line this up so that it sits on this bottom guide. And then I'm also going to change the opacity to 80. So a quick way to change the opacity is just hit 8 on your keyboard. And then we're going to make a copy of this. And here we'll type in in, whoops, in theaters and streaming. I'm going to select all with command A and then here we'll get rid of the tracking and then I'm just going to make this smaller until it's about the same size as my in February. So about 50 points. Okay, last step. So we're going to add some color and if you look at the original poster so that's quite a bit of color, but that's all going to happen with one layer. I'm going to show you how to do that. So at the very top, we're going to add a gradient map. And the gradient map adds this color to our darks and then this color to our lights. So we're going to go to our dark color. We're going to make this kind of a dark green. It's going to be 062F1D. And then we're going to add another color point at the 50 location spot. And then this one is going to be 799B96. It's kind of a slightly bluer, lighter version of that color. And then for our white, we're going to change this to EDEAC7, which is kind of a mustardy, light mustardy color. And there you can see we now have that. Um, if I want to adjust these so that they don't look so stretched, I can actually do that and just go into our shadow layer, unlock our group from our mask, and with our mask selected, do Command-T for transform, kind of bring our guide here to the bottom, and then holding Option and Shift, just going to take this down a little bit to about there, and then save. And you can see that makes those people a little bit more proportionally correct. And I'm happy with that. So there you have it. That's how you recreate that poster in Photoshop. And hopefully through the course of this, you learn some tips, tricks, and techniques that you can use in your own projects. Now, if you enjoyed this and want to accelerate your learning in Photoshop, do check out the courses that I have available at Nucle.com. Otherwise, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like, share this video, leave a comment, turn on notifications, do all that good stuff. Here are some other videos to check out. And I'll see you next time.